In this video, we're going to create a database and then create an empty table. So first of all, what is your database going to be about? Well, let's say we are car enthusiasts. So this is everything about cars. So I'll right and click on the word databases. And if you can't see it, you might want to expand your instance, your actual SQL server instance. So you can see databases, right and click on it and go to new database and just type whatever name you want. So I'm going to just call this cars. And so we have a new database available to us. Now, if we expand this, you can see we've got tables. Tables are objects that store data. So they store your data. So I'm going to create a new table. Now I'm doing this without any code whatsoever. You can see I'm just right and clicking on tables and going to new table. Now, if you do want to get involved with SQL at a more deeper level, then you should learn the syntax for this, how to actually write a create table statement. But for now, we're just going to be using the GUI, the GUI, the graphical user interface. Now a table can have multiple columns. Now each column should be about something unique. So maybe we have a car model. Now I generally have my column names without spaces. It's easier for later on. You can choose, you can have spaces, you can have underscores, you can have whatever you want. This is your table. Now we have to have a data type. Now this is when it can get a bit overwhelming, but don't worry, I'll take you through the main data types. First of all, we have got the ints. Int stands for integer. So these are your whole numbers. So big int can go beyond the billions. Int goes up to about 2 billion and down to minus 2 billion as well. Small int goes from minus 32,000 or so to plus 32,000. And tiny int goes from 0 to 255. So there are no negative numbers in tiny int. So feel free to use whatever you want as a whole number. If you want a number that can have decimal places, my recommendation is to use small money if you're going from minus 200,000 to plus 200,000 or to use money if you're going beyond that. Both of these will start up to four decimal places. Now there are other ones like decimal, but that gets a bit complicated. I would go for small money and money. And by the way, you can use those regardless of whether what you are storing is actually money or not. It could be something completely different. It could be the number of times you've gone to somewhere. It doesn't have to be anything about money. Now, car model, this sounds like a text. So we have got two main types. We have got n Vartra and we have got varchar. There's lots of other types, but I'm just illustrating these two for this video. Var, this means that it could have a variable number. So we can have up to a certain number of characters. So 50 characters in this example. So I can have one character, I can have 50 characters. Varchars will work perfectly well with all of them. Now, it uses a character set which is typically sort of West European. So if you're going outside of that, then use an N varchar. So this allows for a lot more characters, including say Japanese, Chinese characters, various character sets. Basically, if it can be used on a computer, use an N varchar. However, if you're sticking to roughly Western Europe, then use a varchar. Now the number in the brackets you can edit. So this is the maximum number of characters you are allowed. So 50 for me is a bit too many. So I'm going to go for 30. Allow nulls. What does that mean? Well, nulls mean nothing. So do you actually want this column, in this case car model, to be there for every single row of data? Is it optional? If it's optional, you can allow nulls. If it's not, then you can choose to allow nulls if you want to, but if you want to enforce that you need a value, then you should de-check allow nulls. So this is a car model. Maybe we'll have a car make, and we'll also do same data value. Now, maybe you want to say when you bought it, so date of purchase. 
So that would be a date if you don't have a time. If you do have a time, then I would recommend using a date time two. There are other ones available, but these are the two that I would recommend at least to start with. So I'm not going to put in a time of purchase. I'm not going to say I purchased this at 5.42 p.m. on a particular day. Now I'm going to say, actually, I'm not sure necessarily that I know when I purchased this. So I am going to allow no's. And I'm also going to put a car ID. So this is a ID for the table. And this is just going to be a series of numbers. So I'm going to call it an int. Now, I don't want to have to specify those numbers. So I'm going to call it an identity. Now, the identity means that the computer will put in sequential numbers instead. So I'm going to say is identity yes. And it says we're going to start at one and we're going to go up in ones. Now, this car ID is going to be unique. If you have a unique column, something that expresses something particular about each row. So, for instance, I could say, look at this Ford KA, which I purchased on the 25th of February. Or I could say, look at car ID number six. That gets me to a particular car. There are no other car ID sixes. Now, for this, I'm going to label this as a primary key. So primary keys are used when it is unique and when you do not have any nulls. You can see a little key symbol appears. This is useful later on. Right, I'm going to now save my table. And the way I do that is I just click close. If you want to see what it would look like in TSQL code, then you can generate a change script. And here's what it looks like. Create table, name of table, and then in brackets, we have various things that we have selected. But we don't need to go into that for this video. So I'm going to close. I'm going to say, yes, I want to save these items. And now it's giving me a name for the table. So I'm going to say cars. Now I generally put in TBL at the beginning to show that it's a table. Click OK. And nothing happens over in the left hand side. You have to refresh. So to refresh, we click on this refresh button and there we have our table cars. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, why not join me in my course on 98-364 in which we'll go through things like creating tables in TSQL code and much more. And by the end, you will have the knowledge that you need, if you want to go for it, to get an official Microsoft certification at a little extra cost to Microsoft. If you like this video, please click like and why not click subscribe and check that bell right next to it. That way you'll get notified of any new videos. I'm Philip Burton. Thank you very much for watching.